I've been watching the Demacia Cup, just keeping up with VODs. I'm always trying to track the meta and, you know, learn more about the game and understand it on a deeper level. And I uh, found the start of a, a recent Demacia Cup game really interesting as a way to illustrate how just a series of small decisions can have a huge impact on the outcome of the game. So I want to jump in and talk about that. We'll start with the draft and how this was set up. So as you can see in this draft, uh, it's BYU against EDG, uh, game one of their series. Uh, and what happened in this draft is uh, you can see BYU uh, picked the Karma uh, in the second rotation. Uh, this is interesting. In I believe this was a flex pick because you could play it into the Malzahar, uh, and you can also obviously play it support. Uh, they they allowed the, the draft to play out and, and saw that... Uh, EDG end up picking the Tom Kench into it. Uh, they they also paired the, the Zai with it and put it in the bottom lane, decided to pick Oriana into the Malzahar. Uh, I don't want to dig into the draft too far. That's not really the point. But but ultimately what you have here in these drafts is a Zaya Karma bottom lane against an Ezreal Tom Kench bottom lane. Uh, and so the the this was a very intentional, given that the Karma was a flex pick, this is an intentional putting Karma in the bottom lane. We're going to use this against the Ezreal. EDG picked the Tom Kench into it which gives BYU a, a ranged into melee support matchup. Uh, and that should, you know, uh, barring kind of subtleties of, of the first few levels or the way different, you know, uh, the lane is influenced by the junglers or so on, but it should give BYU uh, a good push advantage as the laning phase plays out a little bit. Uh, so what you get from these, and what's important here is, is understanding the win conditions of the two team compositions. Uh, EDG has Shen in the top lane, uh, and they've also got Malzahar and Kha'Zix. So they've got really a, a, a comp that's designed to um, later in this later in the game <clears throat> play a 1-3-1 style that can push the lanes and then rotate collapse get picks and kind of win that way it's not a 1-3-1 to you know be pushing on the towers in multiple lanes and, and whittling down the towers that way what some might call a hard split push uh, it's it's more of yeah more of a rotational aggressive split push uh, with Kha'Zix you know uh, going stealth through the jungle and, and Malzahar ultimate and so on uh, and early on, to set that uh, mid-game up, they have Shen, who's going to play into the bottom lane. They've got um, Malzahar, who's probably going to want to play into the bottom lane. They can have Kha'Zix gank, probably either mid or bot, um, while they allow the Shen to kind of be self-sufficient. That's that's the way I would see this draft playing out for EDG. So their win condition really is to, to hit the bottom half of the map, depending how mid and bot lane are playing out. And that will set up their rotational 1-3-1 mid-game. For BYU, they're, they're looking for a 4-1 split push with Nar having a strong advantage in the top lane and able to push in and hit the tower that way. And they've also got really good team fighting with uh, Nar and Oriana especially. They've got a lot of disengage in their four-man unit of their split push um, with the Zaya being hard to catch. Uh, Oriana can use her ultimate to disengage. They've got the speed boosts from Oriana and Karma, lots of shielding. So they're really a 4-1 split push that wants to deny EDG from, from engaging with their Malzahar flash ult, which is really their only... Um, kind of reliable way to engage. It's it's a really low cadence kind of initiation comp for EDG that can start things, but only in very specific cir uh, circumstances they have to set up a lot. So so BYU, they should be in the middle, in the mid game, um, able to play this 4-1, disengage uh, when EDG tries to engage. They want to really control the vision and, and deny EDG from getting these rotational picks. So BYU need to basically track the Kha'Zix. This is what's really important for them. They need to deny EDG's win condition of getting the bottom half of the map um, ahead aggressively with Malzahar roaming for picks, Shen using his ultimate to hit the bottom of the map, um, you know, Kha'Zix setting up those picks. So if you can track the Kha'Zix and control the lanes and just deny any kind of aggression in the early game, um, using your push in the bottom lane to have priority, set up vision in the river, these kinds of things, this is this is what, uh, in my mind, BYU should be trying to do to control this. So, which means that in the early game, BYU have to choose uh, specifically for Jarvan's pathing. Do they want to send him into the top lane? Because the traditional approach against against Shen is push him under tower or gank him or do whatever you can to make it very difficult for him to use his ultimate to hit the bottom lane. Because if you gank the bottom lane with Jarvan, post six specifically for Shen, then Shen can use his ultimate to influence that gank and make it very difficult for you to reach uh, any influence in the bottom of the map. So you play towards the top side against Shen. BYU can choose that that approach and set up their own NAR split push win condition of having him be a strong 1v1 uh, duelist and a, and a split push tower taker later on. Or the other option is <clears throat> send Jarvan to the bottom side of the map where the goal there would be to synchronize with the lane pushing from the bottom lane, um, 
you'd hopefully get some priority in the mid lane as well. Draven might help get that priority in the mid lane. Uh, and then you kind of invade and you track Kha'Zix. It's not to duel him and shut him down unless you have support, maybe from the Karma, being able to roam out of lane and invade the jungle with Jarvan, something like that. But it's a little more conservative, a little more general pressure-based and control-based um, playing to the bottom half of the map. So those are the two choices that BYU have in my mind. Uh, and if we jump in, we can see what they actually did. And this is where it gets really interesting. So we have the setup here. And I'll just speed through it a little bit more. Uh, and you can see that what BYU are trying to do is send Jarvan toward the top half of the map, uh, presumably. They send their bottom lane to leash the red buff for Jarvan, so he can take the red buff. Now he can, if we focus on him a little bit, he can go path towards his top quadrant and presumably try to <clears throat> impact the top lane, target the Shen, that approach, the first option we gave. But what you can see here in the bottom lane is what that's, because the bottom lane for ED, uh, for BYU rather had to leash to give Jarvan that, that boost, and they didn't necessarily have to leash, I think this is this is the really crucial point. Um, obviously it helps Jarvan out a lot when he gets that leash, but giving him that leash uh, allows iBoy and Mako to take down those first couple of minions. You can see iBoy's about to get his third CS, and uh, An is, uh, you know, looking for his first, or rather his, his, uh, it looks like he missed one CS and he's going for the second melee minion here. Basically, EDG's bot lane has a big tempo lead for the first wave. And what happens because of that, as it plays out a little bit, is, uh, level two comes in for EDG first in just a moment here, uh, on somewhere in this wave. Uh, iBoy and Mako get a big tempo lead in lane and, the ability for uh, for the BYU bottom lane to control it uh, is, is kind of gone. Like, they, they arrive to lane, there's the level 2. Now, they've taken all this poke from Ezreal. Ezreal's really strong in the first couple levels. I'm not a really strong, like, matchups and micromechanics kind of person, but uh, but this is like, you know, Ezreal's weakness in lane comes a little bit later when he's in kind of a, a power trough on his itemization. He's trying to stack his tier and so on. Um, so he's not there yet. Uh, you can't. You don't just get a free lane win against him in the first few levels. And same with kind of the ranged melee matchup. There's the threat of the all in very early on. Um, so really, you needed to be in position, probably have brush control or these kinds of things that somebody could explain much better than I could to try to get that early lane control for the bottom lane. BYU didn't get that um, to a large extent because they leashed in the jungle, and there goes that bottom lane control. So. The, this is kind of the small, this is the consequence of that small de decision to path Jarvan towards the top side, uh, use the bottom lane to leash for him and set that up. And now, <clears throat> this really has a lot of consequences as the game plays out. Uh, if we move on a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, BYU are trying to get there, you know, they, they should be able to stabilize and get some, some lane control back in the bottom lane. So, you know, they're pushing back, they heal up, they use some potions, they haven't lost any summoners or anything like that. They've just lost kind of the tempo to have control. And now you can see in the bottom side here, Jarvan cleared his top side, he didn't really have anything to do there. Uh, he came back down, Kha'Zix had started top and gone bottom because his win condition was to affect the bottom side of the map. And so here he is in the river, he takes the Scuttlecraft, he has control, and now he's looking for a jungle invasion because he wants to duel Jarvan without any inter interference um, and use his 1v1 strength early. Uh, so this is where it's good that Jarvan has come back to the bottom side of the map, and maybe this is the plan from the start. Maybe somebody would be able to, to you know, point that out, and, and that's something that I, you know, maybe it's not fair of me to criticize him as pathing towards the top side of the map when maybe his goal all along was to go from bottom to top and then back to bottom because he knew Kha'Zix tried to invade. I don't know, there's there's some subtleties there that somebody else might be able to point out, but, but what actually happens here is that BYU do get some control back of this bottom side. Oriana gets pre, uh, gets priority over Malzahar, can rotate into the river, can support the Jarvan, and Kha'Zix can't do anything in the river that he wanted to do. Uh, so this is smart of BYU, of Jarvan being back there, uh, using that mid lane control, getting control of the river. But here's what the second, what I would call the second mistake, or maybe this is really the only one mistake. Uh, maybe this has kind of played out the way we, BYU thought it would. Um, but, but here's what really kind of gets interesting. Jarvan now is going to head out from that little duel. He's he's going to head into the topside river. And this ward right here, if you can see this, uh, that's a ward that Kha'Zix actually placed during his first clear. 
If we jump back a couple of minutes, we should be able to see it. Where is it here? So Shen had leashed for Kha'Zix. Actually, this is before even he leashed. Kha'Zix places this ward at 1 minute 8 seconds, and that ward uh, lasts the way through. You can see here it is. We keep going. Here comes the little duel. Jarvan's going back to the... And there's that ward right there. Uh, and th that allows EDG to see that Jarvan is now... In the, there's the ping right there. They see Jarvan's on the top side of the map. While that's happening, that, that appearance by Jarvan gives EDG the confidence that Kha'Zix, who you know got pushed out of the river just now, went back and farmed his Gromp, and now they know, oh, Jarvan is happy with the control he gained, um, that he's protected his mid lane, you know, Oriana and Jarvan got some wards in here to protect the mid lane, where Oriana has a lot of priority and could have been vulnerable otherwise without that vision. Um, BYU no, no Kha'Zix is in this jungle quadrant, but still, and here's the, the, uh, the very subtle mistake that... Uh, that really decides this whole thing, is that BYU know Kha'Zix is in, is in this quad, quadrant. They know that the EDG win condition is to hit the bottom side of the map and hit gank either mid or bottom and then chain that into a bunch of other events. And they still step just a little too far forward in bottom lane, trying to get a, a, a winning trade. They think they're getting Eyeboy, and here comes the Kha'Zix. Used a Blast Plant over the wall, jumps in, gank for first blood. So that whole sequence of the way the early game played out with the pathing, with uh, with BYU's duo lane being late to lane, not getting the level 2, um, the, the way the tempo of that all played out, the fact that they were stabilizing but then made this one very small positional mistake, when the alternative they could have had is Jarvan and Oriana pushed Kha'Zix out of the jungle, they could have pushed in and harassed him some more because the bottom lane was starting to get priority again, they could have collapsed even more and you know threatened him. There wasn't a blue buff to contest or anything like that, but there was an option that they could have gone for even deeper control. Uh, they could have used Ezreal's ward, which is down now, but uh, was not down earlier. So here, right when Kha'Zix is going back into his jungle, sorry, not Ezreal's ward, Zaya's ward, I mean. Uh, if they had used that river control that they just gained, pushed in, gotten another ward on Kha'Zix and known exactly where he was, played that control, shut down the Kha'Zix early game one condition, they may have been able to avoid, they they should have been able to avoid giving up that first blood. They could have kind of reduced the pace and the aggression level of the early game that much more, gotten to their stable mid game, and I think the game could have played out very differently. I think EDG is just a better team. They would have found other ways. They probably still could win anyways, but you know, taking, taking out kind of the skill of the players and the level of the teams and just looking at the decision making, I think BYU made just a couple of small mistakes and not recognizing how intent EDG would be on hitting that bottom lane, and they allowed this to happen. And what happens from here the rest of the game is EDG basically snowballs that advantage. They win in 23 minutes. Uh, Ezreal is like 8-1-7 and seven at the end. Ibo had a, a big game. Scout was like, what was the scoreline? 1-0-12 and 12 at the end. And it was all because they were able to get this lead in the bottom lane, both with the early level 2 lane priority, and then the Kha'Zix first blood. Uh, and then just chaining that into Malzahar shoving and roaming bot, Shen tel uh, ult using his ultimate into the bottom lane, and doing exactly what their comp was designed to do. Uh, and then giant snow any pick comp, especially with assassins like this, is going to be a giant snowball kind of a comp, uh, generally speaking. So it's really interesting to me the way those small pieces kind of fit together to play out the way it did, uh, and just thought of maybe kind of an interesting thing to share and, and talk about a bit.